I am glad I bought a Steam controller. I don't think I would be able to play Defunct without it. The problem was, Defunct uses the arrow pads as its default movement, and that was really uncomfortable. It made my hand cramp. I would play for 20 minutes and it'd start hurting. So I tried to change the key bindings, of course. There's two key bindings. There's primary and there's secondary key bindings. So I tried to change the primary key binding to the WASD keys, and it wouldn't change. So I tried changing the secondary key bindings and it worked, but the problem was now I had interference between the primary key bindings and the secondary key bindings. So my other option was use a gamepad. That didn't work because the game's code for the controller is messed up and the character automatically drifts left. And I would open the menus and then it would slide right all the time. So thankfully, I had the Steam controller. I wish I understood why the developers gave me a copy that was messed up. I'm reviewing the game and this is the copy you give me? They say in an email there's bugs to work out, and I understand that, but give me a good copy or wait until the bugs are out. The ability to change the controls are important. They affect how you experience the game. It's a red flag to me that Freshly Squeezed was willing to send us a copy like that. They say the bugs will be out by the time you're playing this, and I hope they are. But let's assume the experience I had with the Steam Controller is the experience you would have with the arrow keys or a gamepad. First. I'd highly recommend a gamepad. This game is fast, and you're going to need the ability to make pressure sensitive adjustments when things get really fast. Freshly Squeezed calls Defunct an adventure game. I think it's more accurate to call it an adventure racing game. When I first turned it on, I didn't know what to do. I'm rolling along, moving through each level, collecting something here and there, but the ultimate goal is to get back to your ship you fell out of. You have to roll over hills and valleys and roll through tunnels and forests. You're bouncing off big jump pads and sliding on rails. All this to get back to your ship. You have the ability to control gravity for yourself so you can make yourself heavier and you can stick to surfaces so you can stay on them. Let's say you're on a surface that's upside down. You can use one of the gravity functions to stick to that surface so you don't fall off. Or let's say you want to go downhill faster. You can use the other gravity function that pulls you down and makes you slide down the hill faster. But if you start going uphill, it will slow you down a lot. You're on planet Earth, but now it's inhabited by robots of similar kind. A body and one wheel. At first, the character is kind of cute. Freshly Squeezed tries to create an emotional connection between you and the character with animations that aren't amazing, but convey enough so you can tell what he's feeling. His engine is always making noises and he's constantly pounding it to make it work, but after a while it goes from cute to slightly annoying. You wonder why they gave him a broken engine when he can go at phenomenal speeds. And he has a light on his back indicating when he's struggling uphill, but there's no consequence for making the engine work harder. I like that they put these type of design points, but they're points that ultimately don't add up to anything. While you're rolling through the world, if you don't want to just go from level to level, then you can take your time and collect things. These gold coin looking objects don't have names, but when you collect them, you can unlock different colors and tricks for your robot. After you're done racing through the world, you could play time trials. There's three types of time trials. Get from point A to point B as quickly as possible, race through the gates, and collect the batteries as quickly as possible, or some combination of all of those. All of these levels have green balls you can collect that stop time for a moment, so you want to collect as many of these green balls as possible. When you look at the leaderboards, people have insane times. But you would not be able to get these times unless you collect the green balls, so the goal isn't just get to your destination as fast as possible. It's really collect as many of the balls and get through the levels as quickly as possible. I'm not a fan of that way of time trialing because I like to figure out how to get from point A to point B without having to focus on collecting items. You could take time to figure out the best route to collect the green balls and speed boost scattered throughout the map. That's the point, but my preference is to focus only on the level. That's just my style. If that sounds appealing to you, you'll definitely enjoy it. I like Defunct. The game lasts a little over an hour if you race through it, but including collecting everything and time trials, you could squeeze a good 10 hours out of this game. The collectibles are hidden well, and the time trials are challenging. There are some design choices that could have been scrapped or refined, but other than the robot constantly hitting his broken engine, it's fine. I don't know how much this game costs by the time you watch this, but if you like going really fast, you'll want to check out this game. But Freshly Squeeze needs to fix the key binding and gamepad situation by the time you watch this. I am trusting they will, but consider yourself warned.
Defunct gets a 7 out of 10. Don't forget to subscribe to the Game Watcher YouTube channel, like on Facebook, and follow on Twitter.